but let's move right on and keep it then with the corporate voice the management of hindalco is now with us on the show we have mr satish pai managing director uh, joining in to talk about a fairly strong quarter for the company and congratulations thanks much for taking time out it's definitely been a healthy show by the company despite the less than impressive aluminium prices uh, prices higher input costs and the copper smelter i want to start off by talking about aluminium with utkal that was a game changer for you in the quarter gone by so take us through what have been the key takeaways what have been the contributors to your earnings so i think as you said the key takeaways are that in spite of uh, uh, lower lme we have delivered uh, very good aluminium results now that has been for a, a couple of reasons i think one the rupee depreciation certainly helped uh second thing is that we had uh, uh, good and efficient operations during a monsoon period our volumes were higher so we uh, sold nearly 25 kt more of aluminium in q2 than in q1 and of course uh, our alumina prices um, we are fully backward integrated so the higher alumina prices did not have a negative impact on uh, hindalco aluminium so as a combination i think in a very tough monsoon quarter our aluminium results were very good what is the average aluminium prices that you witnessed in q2 about uh, $2059 compared to $2257 in q1 what was the average transfer price for alumina from utkal and how has the volatility in and alumina prices impacted your overall performance so as i said we are fully backward integrated so i think the alumina prices have been fairly volatile going up between 500 and 700 dollars but uh, for us um, it utkal is a 100% owned sub of hindalco so for us the alumina price gyration has no impact on the hindalco india business for us we just look at the cost of production of uh, utkal alumina which is among the lowest in the world so that was uh, an, certainly an advantage for us Right. So, LME, uh, LME aluminum prices moved below the $2,000 per ton level on account of the weak China data. How is it that you see the current demand supply situation in both aluminum as well as alumina? So, that's a, really the good question. Uh, first, I think that the fundamentals of supply and demand, where the demand is nearly 1.6 to 1.7 million tons of aluminum more than the production, and the fact that inventories are so low means that aluminum prices should be higher than the 2000 we see today now what is happening actually is that the global trade war and the uncertainty is casting a little bit of a doom spell over the market people are worried about the chinese economy whether there is a slowdown there will it hurt the consumption of aluminum in the chinese economy so i think that if this trade war gets sorted out I see an upside in the aluminium prices. I think the 2000 is actually more or less the base because at this price more than 50% of the smelters worldwide are actually not making money because of as you said higher alumina prices who are not backward integrated. So I think that from this 2000 level there should be some upside if the US China trade war gets sorted out. Okay so tell me what's the average rise in coal and fuel costs that you witnessed and has the inflationary trend in raw materials persisting now Yeah I mean the the biggest impact for us this quarter has been coal prices which has been roughly 12% higher than coal prices in Q1 and that's largely because you know the demand was very tight and we had to try to get more coal on the spot auction and the traders and then everyone was trying to do the same so our coal prices went up so i really think and hope that in the next few quarters uh, we will get more of the coal or at least as much as we are supposed to get of our linkages uh, in which case our coal costs will come down but on the other side uh, cp coke pitch prices were slightly better but furnace oil prices were higher so more or less on the input cost side it still is you know uh, cost of production of aluminium q1 to q2 was higher by 8% now we assume and we think that uh, q3 q4 will be flat with q2 mr pai you've also won back the krishna shila coal linkage to what extent does this cater to your coal requirements so look our coal uh, 
requirement is 16 million tons so 3 million is a sizable amount there but more important this 3.1 million tons goes uh, we uh, renu sagar is on the border of the krishna shila mine so the whole renukut smelter this was a very uh, key mine and a key contract for us so we are very happy that in a very open and uh, competitive auction we got back the 3.1 million at more or less the same price as we had it before now copper revenues as well have done reasonably well in the quarter gone by and this despite the shutdown in the copper smelter but the abita has been hit so what would you how would you explain that and what is the outlook in terms of the the revenues going forward i think the abita is fairly in line with the lower uh, copper uh, volume production so you know we uh, sold about uh, 72 kt of copper normally we sell about 100 and that is accounts for the uh, ebitda shortfall but large part of that shortfall was made up by sales of sulfuric acid fertilizer dap gold silver because all these by product prices have been quite strong so that's why i think you look overall quarter on quarter uh, compared to last year copper results were 17% down but sequentially they were up so where do you see and what trend do you see in copper prices because it's been one metal which has been relatively stable i think copper i don't know if i would say stable because it has gone between 7000 and current 6000 so 1000 dollar swing but for us remember we are a converter business so only the tcrc charges are important to us and what has happened is tcrc charges are are quite stable right now so we think that you know even next year they're going to be flat if not up from this year So that's why for our copper business we think that this is good news. So what is the status of the Arslis acquisition and when and by when do you think you will be able to absorb the entire impact of this acquisition? So LRS as we we announced it in July and we said that it will take us 9 to 15 months to go through the regulatory process. So we are going through that regulatory we have filed in the US, Europe and China. and uh, we think that we will probably be able to close it somewhere in the april may time frame next year so that's our, more or less our timeline we are going through the regulatory uh, approvals process right now right uh, talking about a lares acquisition will it give you a, uh, access to higher margin markets value added products how would you say that this move uh, is going to impact your average ebitda margin range So uh, I think that the EBITDA per ton of Novelis already at $440 per ton is quite high. The Alaris uh, acquisition what it will give us is uh, an exposure to the aerospace which tends to be at a very high EBITDA per ton. So I think that overall bit when Alaris and uh, Novelis come together you should still be at the sort of $400 uh, dollars per ton EBITDA. but i think that it will become lot more stabler and we will have access to the aerospace market as well right so the lrs acquisition will give you access to higher margin markets value added products both but how would this move your average ebitda margin range so uh, i think that the ebitda per ton of novelis already at 440 dollars per ton is quite high the lrs uh, acquisition what it will give us is uh, an exposure to the aerospace which tends to be at a very high ebitda per ton so i think that overall bit when lrs and uh, novelis come together you should still be at the sort of 400 dollars uh, per ton ebitda but i think that it will become lot more stabler and we will have access to the aerospace market as well Thanks for sharing those insights Mr. Pai we'll let you go on that note there's some key takeaways from the management of Hindalco and what has been a fairly strong quarter they're talking about how the high alumina prices did not impact the company's aluminum production and how they're seeing an upside in the aluminum prices a regulatory process is what they're currently in the works in for the completion of the Alaris acquisition